A lot's been said and written about how domestic investors have proven to be a force to reckon with in recent months. And a large chunk of it flows through mutual funds and the SIP route. But the recent liquidity scare, or perhaps the agreements entered by some of the mutual fund houses with promoters of some companies, may have rocked the Apple cart. Uh, or it could be uh, the KYC norm changes that have happened. Data released by the Mutual Fund Association shows a drop in new folio additions and higher redemptions in January. So how worried should the mutual fund industry be? How worried should investors be or should they be worried at all? Let's talk about this in greater detail with two experts. Radhika Gupta of Edelweiss AMC to start off the discussion in a bit. We'll also get in Kalpain Parekh of DSP. Uh, Radhika, good having you. Thanks much for joining in. Is this, um, is this a reason to worry? Or is this something that would normally happen, but we're seeing for the first time in the last couple of months, and therefore it's raising eyebrows? So good morning, Neeraj. I think uh, you know systematic plans, of course, have been a very important sort of tenant of the growth of the mutual fund industry, and you can't take away from their contribution both in terms of domestic flows and in terms of what they bring to stability of equity markets. To your question, I think there are three reasons why systematic investment plan numbers have dipped off a little bit. Uh, one is, I think, more business as usual, and two are, uh, you know, a little bit of what's happened in the last uh, few months. One is, of course, systematic investment plans grew very popular, and a lot of investors entered over the last one, one and a half year. Now, because equity market performance has been relatively patchy, especially in the mid and small cap segment, and a lot of SIPs do happen in mid cap funds or you know multi cap funds, people are seeing one year negative returns on systematic investment plans. So for first time investors, that makes them a little bit jittery. And hence, you don't have as many new investors coming into systematic investment plans. You have a couple of people also potentially withdrawing. So that's something that is expected in these kind of market conditions, although it's not something one recommends or it's not something that uh, is ideal, but is, it is something that can happen. Um, two other things have also, of course, happened, frankly, over the last six months. And one is a change in incentive structure uh, for distributors selling systematic investment plans. Uh, that would have had some impact, um, and that's something we can't take away from. And then the second, to a smaller extent, is the impact of uh, not allowing Aadhaar uh, to be used as a form of KYC. So that will impact some of the online players. So two of these things are a little bit driven by regulatory changes, and I think they were expected. The first is, of course, market conditions, but that I think will normalize with markets getting a little bit better. Hmm. You know, uh, while the question with regards to registrations coming off, uh, you know, I think we showed a graphic there which showed the registrations that started coming off in the month of October itself. But the actual inflow in the form of SIPs, you know, have been going up month on month. How, how can one read into this divergence and, and what kind of a, a meaningful data point can one remove from it? So I think one, uh, you know, the SIP number that comes out, the seven, eight thousand crores is the actual systematic investment plan triggered in that particular month. Uh, when a registration happens or a deactivation happens, it takes a little uh, bit of time for that registration to actually go through. It can be 20 days, it can be 30 days, it can be 45 days. So an immediate drop off in registrations is not going to translate into an immediate drop off in the numbers that you see reported by Amphi on a monthly basis. Sure, got, got, got that. But uh, I was referring to uh, the dip in the month of October. And if you give it even two months, December also saw an uptick of uh, the overall SIP inflow. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, the SIP inflow that is reported, I think, you know, one has to look, as I said, as this, at the data conventions, the SIP inflow number that is reported is a gross number. It's not a net number, as I understand it. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, Kalpin Parekh, of course, joins in, in this discussion as well. I, I think Radhika's first point, Kalpin, about uh, the, new, the KYC norms change and the impact that it has on online players. Now, I was speaking to a couple of online brokers, and without giving me numbers, which they wouldn't, they did say that uh, they are facing some dip in the online registrations. The, the mass market, the bottom end of the market, which was getting in that 50,000 rupees without minimum KYC, is now facing issues. Uh, have you heard of the same? Are you facing that in your direct subscriptions as well? And is this something that will change? People get attuned to a new norm and at some point of time they'll come back to a good product. Yeah, I think the product 
universally has been good for decades. Uh, it got relevance in the last few years because everyone started speaking about it. And it became a part of UN analyst reports, uh, making a case that why the India equity story will have more depth because there is a block of $1 billion coming in every month, which hmm. is counterbalancing FII. So SIP has never got this type of recognition in narratives till now. Uh, these dips are seasonal. And uh, the two seasonalities are one is regulation and uh, uh, you know primarily the operational uh, inconvenience now with Aadhaar not being allowed. So that is the reason why the dip has happened for digital players, our online subscriptions across the industry, as well as the fundamental reality that uh, human beings like uh, last one or two year returns to look good for making future investments. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, uh, you asked a question that is it something to worry? And uh, for an investor who has started his SIP just one or two years back, and 90% of investors have done that because this cycle has started only two years back. And when they started off, they've contracted for 10, 15, 20 year SIPs. There is a 25% block of SIPs, which is a perpetual SIP, which means it can last for longer. So operationally, people have signed up for 10, 15, and 20 years. But behaviorally, people have committed only till the time returns look good. Sure. And uh, the fundamental point, I think, uh, and I'm glad that you know, you're doing a show at this point in time to help investors appreciate. Uh, I was doing this analysis for our uh, small cap fund, which is popular for SIPs, but also has been volatile in line with all small cap funds. In the last year, uh, 2017, when markets were going up and NAVs were going up, an investor on an average was getting around uh, 75 units per month. Today, he's getting 93 units per month. So there is an uptake of 22% extra units that an investor is acquiring. So from an investor's perspective who, who, who have started off their SIPs and who still have a 5-10 year increment, which means 60 more installments to acquire, this is a great time. In fact, they should celebrate these uh, you know moments uh, and uh, take advantage of this. The question though, Kalpain, is, uh and, and I completely appreciate that point because uh, in, from a behavioral perspective, uh, it's, it's best to buy the dips, uh, dips buy, buy when others are um, Not fearful and sell. and sell when others are greedy. So that's the classic adage. The question mark is that are we, while that is the ideal behavior, in the last two or three months, are investors showing that? And that would be a question to both you and Radhika, that in your experience of the last two and a half months, we are almost at the end of February, the last three months, have your direct plans and your subscribers who, have, who would have subscribed to you directly for either perpetuity or 10, 15 month, 10, 15 yes. years subscriptions, have they started pulling back? Yeah, so uh, it is a trend across the industry, including DSP mutual fund, where incrementally the new flow of SIP is slower than the last two years. No, but what and about the ones? The redemptions. Who, redemptions. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm or, or I would say the Caesars. Hmm. Uh, you know, we call it um, SIPs stopped. Yes. So there are two types of stoppages. One, uh, some SIP which would have started five years back, the 60th month has got over, the investor has not rolled it over. So that is also happening partly where investors mm. are saying, okay, let me wait till the election or let me, you know, now my last one or two returns have come off. Uh, I will wait before I roll over again for the next five years. So the auto rollovers are slowing down, number one. And number two, investors who started two years back uh, with a five year, 10 year tenor are saying that, okay, I think my one year, two year return is not looking that great. Let me stop for a moment. Okay. So these two trends are evident, uh, very early signs right now. Uh, generally, I've seen, and you know, the best way to uh, analyze whether this is structural or cyclical is to look back at what happened in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, when there was a long period of five years of no returns um, at a market level, and hence, uh, even at an SIP level. So it does test patience of investors, and this is natural. I would say that you know, if markets can continue to drift through time or price correction, we might see increasingly this uh, behavior or reaction from existing SIP holders to slow down. And the new SIPs will continue because the new SIP trend is structural in my view. The numbers could you know, fluctuate in line with the broad top line fluctuation of the market or the NAVs. But the broad trend of using SIP as a mechanism to invest has become structural. And even this month, um, the new number of SIPs, while the peak was 11 lakh uh, number of SIPs, that number has come off by around 15% or so. But you are still getting 8, 9 lakh uh, SIPs still. It's a solid month. number. Uh, it's a big number. Mm. Radhika, uh, the sim similar question to you, and I think Kalpin's point is well taken, but you know the point about people stopping their SIPs, for whatever reason it may be, I think uh, th there is a difference out here too, right? One is you pause your SIP, wait for the roll rollover, or keep the money in the fund. Two would be when people pause or halt their SIPs, they tend to take back or take out the corpus 
itself and that might impact the AUM for the AMC industry at large. Are you seeing that pattern in your AMC or within the industry as well, that people who are stopping are taking the corpus out of uh, their folios? See, Neeraj, why uh, SIPs only? If you look at equity numbers as an industry, and I'll just speak for industry here, uh, the amount of, you know, if you look at the net sales to gross sales, the amount of redemption ratio, that has definitely gone up. Uh, you know, so for every one rupee that was sold, maybe 30% was redeemed six months ago, if you looked at the math. Today, that's closer to 50-60%. So yes, more and more investors are taking out money, uh, whether it is because, whether it's from lump sum investments or SIP investments, and I don't think you can actually distinguish those two in a big way. That is a little bit, it's unfortunate fortunate, of course, uh, but it's also a little bit inevitable, um, particularly, I think, in the first time investor community. You have to realize that a lot of people who came into the SIP market or came into the MF market came in in 2017. So uh, they came in on the back of very, very high expectations in terms of numbers. If you invested in a mid cap fund to do an SIP, you did it optically seeing 20, 30, 40 percent numbers in 2017. And then look at what happened to you in 2018. So as a first time investor, um, obviously, it's a little bit of a shock of an experience, the expectations versus reality. None of it is ideal, as I repeat again and again, because you should have a 5-10 year horizon. Um, but that's some of the impact of what you're seeing. And yes, anecdotally, if one talks across industry, one does see the rate of registration slowing down and more and more people coming forth to discontinue their SIPs. So uh, hard numbers, no, but anecdotally, if one has that conversation, yes, you're seeing that and you're seeing that also in the lump sum flows. Okay. Uh Final question on this conversation, Kalpain, to you. Uh, would you, I'm sure you, you guys go out and conduct a lot of these uh, meetings and camps with investors. Have two uh, instances played a part in starting investor sentiment? One would be uh, balanced funds, which were sold by a lot of distributors as dividend plays, and those have turned SAR, and therefore we've seen this downflow coming in. Does it kind of uh, have an impact on the perception of the industry by and large? And two, uh, you know, any any reference to all this news flow around, you know, how the debt funds have been and therefore the collateral damage that even equity funds have to see? So, uh, I will not uh, refute the role of uh, recent experiences around the dividends becoming taxable, uh, the expectations that these were a short dividends, but now my capital itself is down by 7-8% does impact an investor because Ironically, the challenge is that when money comes in, it comes in uh, assuming a 15% or 12% straight line return. Uh, very few investors really recognize at the time of beginning that it is going to be a roller coaster journey always. Uh, data has always shown that over the last 30, 40 years. But uh, uh, most investors you know, mentally think that this is going to be a straight line return. And I've always said that collectively as an industry, a lot of effort needs to be done to show risk, to show volatility. Uh, to prepare investors so that in times like this they embrace it rather than they uh, are deserted so that has played a role and uh, headlines have not been the best for uh, for the investment market for the last couple of months whether on account of uh, equity volatility or on account of uh, uh, the credit issues so every second day the headline is still uh, negative it does impact the common man who has many other things to do and this adds to his worry on his portfolio but having said that i would uh, you know uh, just urge investors once again that uh, the choice of ache din and ache prices has to be made now. So now is the time when if days are not good but the prices are getting better. I won't say that I know that this is the bottom uh, because that prediction I have never been able to get right in my 20 years. But prices are getting closer to you know saner levels and uh, an investor who has um, you know enough time to allocate his capital, uh, genuine long term capital, this is still one of the best product which can help him be in the top 10% of as an investor. Uh, and there is enough study done, and I think we can keep sharing this in course of time. Yeah, we will during the mutual fund show as well. Kalpen Parekh, Radhika Gupta, thank you so much for joining in today.